We're live. Dang. Oh, all dang. Right, right. Okay, Small Axe Talks, uh, Season 2, Episode 4. I'm here with Charles. Thank you, sir, for coming well, on thank, and talking thank to Thank you me. for the invitation. Yeah, man, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I went on your website and I saw, you know, I was reading your bio and looking at your blog and I saw that, I actually didn't know this, maybe you had mentioned to it or mentioned it before, but I did not know you were from Chicago originally. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, um, I moved there with uh, my partner, Donna, um, from Purdue University. I'm, we met at uh, Purdue University. Okay. And where I was studying painting and sculpture, and she was, um, in uh, you know, working on a science degree. Okay. And, yeah. So, and then I was <clears throat> born and raised in uh, in Indiana. So. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. So I'm not at you know. So yes, I moved to Arizona from Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But and we lived there for 20 years or so. So. We were, oh okay. Yeah, yeah. Where Where'd you grow up in Indiana? Uh, a little town called Richmond. And, um, I've heard of that is, before. Yeah, well, it's actually a very yeah. interesting little town stuck in uh, Indiana on the Ohio border. Um, uh, it, was, it has the Wabash River, and the river has the most drop in the shortest distance length. And so there were uh, grain mills along it. And oh, okay. so it was a very industrious city for for doing grain and stuff back in the day. And uh, along that, because of the river, there's these cliff bands and there's a, um, uh, uh, like a trilobite there of the trilobite family. It might not actually be a trilobite, but something that looks like a little trilobite. That, that's the only place in the world they're found, this, this you know, oh. so that's kind of interesting. And there was a... Um, record company there called Phillips Records, and it was a vanity record uh, company. And so all you had to do was go pay, and they'd record you. And Louis Armstrong recorded what? his very first solo album there at Phillips Records. Um, and I-40 went goes through Richmond, and so for many years, I mean, it was like one of the gateways uh, out of the Midwest to the West. So... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a great, oh, there's a Quaker college there, Earlham College. So there's this kind of progressive kind of enclave there as well as kind of, you know, your more traditional, you know, sturdy Midwestern, you know, folks. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of interesting. How big would you, do you know, like roughly how big of a population? Well, when I was there, I think it was like 50,000. Oh, okay. So, yeah. That's a nice, like, size. Yeah, medium, yeah. I mean, like, because of yeah. all these things being this kind of, uh, gateway, you mm -hmm. know, to the West and, and the things that had, you know, uh, been there. there, you know, the railroad went through there, you know, there was industry and stuff. Yeah. It was, you know, uh, medium sized Midwestern town. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So what, that, that record you were saying people, you could just pay yeah, and it they was would called produce Phillips records oh, okay. and you can, if you want to record something, you didn't need, you know, a producer. You didn't need, you know, the whole business of recording. You just yeah. go pay your money and record you whatever what you, you want to record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so Louis Armstrong. So they were That's awesome. back in the time when, you know, many musicians of color had problems uh, yeah. recording their music. You know? Wow. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So what cool. made you uh, or how did you end up going to Purdue? Um, well, um, that's kind of a, you know, I, I, at that point when you go to college <clears throat> or mm -hmm. go to, you know, 17, 18, um, was kind of at the tail end of the Vietnam war. Wow. And did you want to go to college? Um, well, you know, um, I wanted to get out of Richmond mm -hmm. <laughs> and I knew that at that point, you know, I I really wasn't all that interested in going into the service. Yeah. And so, which left um, going to school. Wow. And uh, I'd always drawn and, and made things. And um, so uh, I went there to study painting and sculpture, which was kind of weird because yeah. it's an engineering school. You know, in the in animal science, and and so they um, so the art department was small and and very supportive so it actually wound mm. up being a 
a great place for me. Yeah. Um, and you know, they had these Quonset huts that they built in World War Two that for the what? soldiers. What Quonset huts are like Quonset these huts? tin shack like things, you know. Okay. And that's where the art department was. And it was kind of like oh, off really? to the side, you know. And, uh, and like so the all the engineers would, you know, well, you know, the art, they're over there in their Quonset yeah. huts. Yeah. You know, just <laughs> so, but um, yeah. it was just a really, uh, there was a great. Uh, tenured faculty there mm. of of uh, color theorist and and professors that kind of came in their education a much more traditional arts education in terms of draftsmanship and drawing color theory and mm. and those kind of things and then there was this group of younger um, uh, artists that came in for graduate work there that were doing things like stuffing you know pallets full of concrete and oh, wow. working with neon light and and stuff like that so there was this you know um, and everybody was just kind of there being you know connected because you know there weren't that many of us yeah right? and there weren't you know so it was uh, there was no no real barrier between uh, the professors and the and the students. You know? That's so was, awesome. Yeah, it was it was. Yeah. Uh, so, would, do, would you say that uh, you have always been an artist, or did you become an artist? Um, I well, you know, no. Um, I have to say that I became one. I became one. Okay. I mean, I always drew. Yeah. You know, and and as a you know, I I got some accolades uh, as a kid for for drawing and and um, uh, so uh, actually in in grade school we had one I had one uh, teacher who every Wednesday we would go down to the <clears throat> auditorium and she'd lay out these big huge pieces of butcher paper oh, and we just spend all afternoon drawing and i have to you know i have to say you know that that was uh uh you know at that time even though i didn't realize it looking back mm-hmm. on it you know that was one of the uh, moments in time that you know that if i had to say there was some kind of of uh seed of an idea yeah that that grew that might be one of the plantings. That's awesome. Right? You yeah. Know? Um, just the idea that, you know, it was something that was considered equal hmm. to uh, math and English and, you know, other kind of studies that you could actually go and spend, you know, here's something that was important, you know, not just something that you did because of whatever, you know, reason that you were... Like recess or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're drawing play. little... Yeah, yeah, drawing, you know... Uh, whatever the kids draw you know so when you when you were at university how did you have a, a particular style or were you just trying you were just being introduced to arts so you were trying different styles no or? no um well i mean you know uh at that at that time i mean you had a, a very traditional kind of liberal arts so you okay. took you know, anthropology, you took a foreign language, you okay. took life drawing, you took uh, design, you took, you know, sculpture. Wow. I mean, so you took everything. Hmm. And so it was kind of through that process, really, that you, you know, you start figuring out, you know, what um, what medium, uh, you know, kind of, of things that uh, kind of resonate in hmm. um so I, you know, um, so figurative, you know, I started out as a figurative painter, okay. and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, my my very first, you know, so we we moved to, uh, you know, Donna um, graduated okay. and wasn't finding what she wanted to do in her with her degree. And what so, was that? Um, she was in animal science. She wanted to be oh. a, a large animal veterinarian. Oh, wow. And so when she first got out of, uh, graduated, she was working uh, in a lab doing, you know, they were doing research on some uh, animals and she took some photography courses just to keep busy and, yeah. and found that, you know, that, you know, that struck a creative chord with her. And so when we kind of decided that, you know, we'd run our course in, in you know, in this, in this little small Indiana uh, college, you know, 
community. I mean, you know, Chicago is right up the road. Let's let's go make our mark, you know. That's awesome. And uh, so we did. So we moved wow. up there, and and uh, she continued on her career. She wound up uh, in uh, in the arts as a, a photo stylist, and oh, okay. uh, through a series of of kind of circumstances, and then that you know was that it was her career. She owned her own business for the next. I don't know, 25 years, you know, That's and awesome. stuff. And I, you know, I just started, I got a job as a preparator in a gallery. and Right, when and, you when you had moved yeah, there? Yeah, that or? was my, you know, we had, a, um, we moved up there uh, with, you know, uh, to an apartment that was probably about the size of this room. Really? With a bathroom in it with, you know, her and I, my, our dog and a cat. And, wow. And uh, we had enough money to pay another month's rent. Oh, and so it was pretty much, you know, um, you get on it, you know. Yeah. You know, there was no other 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 choice, you know, so. What was the city like? Oh, it was great. Time? I mean, you know, I, to this day, I love Chicago. I mean, we moved yeah. here, what, 20 some odd years ago. Yeah. But, you know, because I've, you know, a gallery has represented my work there for many years. Yeah. You know, I go back with, you know, uh, well, I have been going back with regularity. I love Chicago. I mean, I yeah. have great memories there. We still have tons of friends there. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was uh, dynamic, Fun. exciting, you know. Yeah, any, yeah, uh, it was. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably a cool yeah. place to be when you're like, you know, younger. Not that you're old, but yeah. Well, you the know. there was what uh, 25, 26, 27 yeah. in that range when we moved there. That's so awesome. Yeah, and uh, and we were ready. I mean, we yeah. were, you know, when we we hit the ground running, and um, yeah, it was. It was an awesome time. Have you has it has it changed in your opinion dramatically? Chicago? Yeah, since well, my we... experience of going back has. Yeah, because <laughs> you know going back now, you know, I mean, when I go back, you know, over the last twenty years of going back, you know, I'm going to uh, an opening of my work at the at the yeah. you know an exhibition of my work and. Yeah. And, you know, yes, we're going around out to dinner, seeing friends and socializing and, and, you know, you know, and then it's, uh, so there, it's a different kind of experience than yeah. living there and, and making work there. And, um, yeah, yeah. Is Chicago better than New York city? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know uh, that. I've never lived in New York city really. and, and, <clears throat> um, you know, my, uh, Yeah. You know, for me, um, Chicago was big enough. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've, we've gone to New York, and, and Donna was uh, from New York, and we've gone back to New York many, many times, and okay. we do the galleries and and look at art and, and things there. And and um, uh, by the time we, you know, we moved here, we were looking for a different kind of life experience yeah so uh and when we lived in chicago i mean you know the world was my oyster so mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't really feel any need to go to new york yeah yeah because i mean you were happy there yeah happy you know fulfilled i mean you know i've got a you know i was showing work at one of the preeminent galleries there and that's awesome uh you know i yeah so are you guys big foodies? Big foodies? Yeah. Because um, I'm sure Chicago. Yeah, not a more amazing. more so than I. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I mean, I enjoy I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy eating. good food. I enjoy yeah. eating. You know, um, I have a wide range of tastes, but Donna is much more you know experimental in the yeah. in the food you okay. know, thing that I am, and so I you know it's like we're gonna go here. Okay, you know, I'm gonna try that. You know, yeah. yeah, that's one thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm somebody who could live in like a big city, but that's one thing that I think would be nice about living in a bigger city is having the ability to like walk to a lot of places yeah. and, and like walking to restaurants and stuff like that. Like I love like that type of vibe where you could just like be in a cool neighborhood and just like walk yeah. to... Was well, your did you live in areas? Oh like yeah, that? we lived in the city. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't live in Schaumburg or anywhere. You know, when yeah. we first moved there, we lived in a an apartment um, at Clark and Fullerton. Yeah. Um, then we lived a block off of Wilton, a block off of Wrigley Field. Wow. You know, then we moved uh, down to a place called um, 
uh, at Eighteenth and Halstead, which mm. was these art, you know, loft space that this uh, guy by the name of John Potomajerski was redoing and renting out to artists. And, oh wow, that's awesome! And, yeah, then you know, I lived in Bucktown before we, you know, the one that we then we had a space down on the near south side. Um, it was called the Central Manufacturing District, oh, wow. which were these at that time Goodyear Tire had places in there, and and it was uh, basically an empty the the. the uh, the uh, Board of Education was storing like old desks and stuff in parts of this, you know, huge complex. Jeez. And there was this building, it was a tower hmm. that had eight floors in it. And okay. we had the sixth floor. And it was an old, wow. it was like, you know, uh, it was That's the office so building for the Central Manufacturing District. And we, and all these artists just had, were renting these like individual floors. And the, the cool thing about it is the space was like a big U. Yeah. And then on the other side, there was uh, the elevator that was in like a cage. And then oh. there was the stairs that went around. So your your space was like a U. And then awesome. it was all glass. So you had these wow. really great views of the city. And then lived up in, after that, up in Bucktown. So, okay. so we were always in the city. Yeah. Yeah. And each one of those neighborhoods had its own kind of restaurants, its own flavor, its own... You know, uh, you know, down in uh, uh, Central Manufacturing, I mean, it was a Polish neighborhood. Okay. You know, um, Pilsen, it was a Hispanic neighborhood. Yeah. Um, but if you went down to Bridgeport, then, you know, you had Healthy Foods, which was Lithuanian. And, oh, wow. And then, you know, you know and so any, any, any neighborhood that you were in, you know, had its own kind of ethnic flavor. And, you know, so if you walked out the door, you know, that's, you know, what you ate? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So did, yeah. did do you or did you miss that sort of lifestyle when you guys moved out here? Um, well, when I first came out here, um, Donna Ashley came out uh, before me to make sure she, because she owns her own business. Yeah. And made sure her her business could make make it here. And if it wasn't going to make it here, then we were going to go somewhere else. Okay. You know, but we wanted to be in warm climate where yeah. <laughs> the outdoors was kind of uh, a big part of the lifestyle of that environment. Yeah. And uh, so she was, you know, I was coming out here a couple of months out of the year. So it was like almost three years before she, you know, moved out here that I mm-hmm. followed. I was coming out here, I don't know, three months out of the year. Okay. And when the first time I came out, you know, you went out to eat, and it was in a strip mall. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, like, you know what's going on, you know. It's like Subway. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, 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 I've never eaten and gone out to dinner in a strip mall. That's know, hilarious. Yeah, you know, yeah but, uh, you know, so. Wow. So do you enjoy, because I, you know, I saw when I was reading on your website, you know, a lot of your work is inspired by nature, and that's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why you enjoy living out here is because yeah, all yeah. the hiking and stuff like that. So is that something, does that kind of make up for, Maybe some of the things. Well, you... um, it ha- oh, most def most definitely, and, it, and yeah. it's different. I mean, there is culture here. You have to work a little bit more. To it's be better in, now, you know, to be engaged in a cultural life here. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, I have, you know, I'm, I have a reclusive spot in my nature yeah. um, <laughs> that you know I I enjoy, you know, the outdoors. Uh, and it's um, a significantly a significant part of my life, and yeah. it definitely uh, influences my work and informs my work at this point in you know, my creative endeavors. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So when you were in Chicago, because I'm not super in tune with like the art world or anything like that, but I watched a documentary recently. Uh, no, no, it wasn't a documentary. It was a a movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. And he, yeah. Did you see that movie? You know uh, what I'm talking about? About the where he was the he was an art like yeah, yeah, cri- yeah, critic yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. And we saw we saw that yeah. Of did course you? We saw it, it was actually kind of good. Yeah. Um, what was it? And and certainly. So what I was gonna, I was just gonna say though is it's just that whole world to me, and you see this like in the fashion world where there's like very, is that hard to like break into because. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a there's a I, certain I, I, like I, I I do know exactly what you're saying, and the answer to that question is yes. Yeah. Yes. So, what was that like when you were younger and you were trying to? I don't know exactly how it works, but if you're trying to get your work into these galleries, well, um, you know, 
I was, you know, when we went there, I mean, we dove into the art community, like diving into a pool. Really? Wow. And so... What I was mean, your we strategy? Were, we, were, we were, well, it's just, you know, like, we were engaged and we yeah. were, we went places where other people that were making art and, and stuff were. And, yeah. and all our friends were artists and musicians and... And, you know, you went to every opening and you went, you know, to, to every event and you, you know, uh, to every party and, uh-huh. and, uh, um, so you're in the scene basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then you were just always, I mean, you were showing your work at every opportunity, every place you, you could. And, mm. and there were a number of, of galleries that had, you know, group shows or, you know, alternative spaces and, and uh, that we're having group shows and mm. thematic shows and, and and things like that, and you know, you were just you were just out there, mm. and and again, I was uh, you know I I was very fortunate that um, my work uh, came to the attention of uh, a gentleman by the name of Frank Pollock, who was the director of Perimeter Gallery, okay. and. Uh, he put uh, a couple of my paintings in a, in a show. I was still doing figurative work at that time. Oh. And, um, and he just, you know, and I showed with them for the next, uh, till 2015 when he retired oh, wow. and closed his gallery. Wow. You know, so 30 some odd years. And, uh, and which is, which was, you know, pretty unique. I mean, I, you know, I stopped, you know, sure. My second show was these little small um, still lifes, and then you know, then it was into not you know, uh, non representational or abstract you know work, and which hmm. has been what I've you know, kind of the organic abstraction is kind of what I've done ever since, and and so I mean I, you know, regardless of what I did or or the scale I worked in, I mean he just was. That's supportive awesome. of my work and awesome. and and so um you know in retrospect really unusual and quite amazing mm-hmm. and, 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 and uh, you know incredibly fortunate that that uh that happened yeah so and i i don't know i i i, I can i don't know if, if frank and i had many discussions about art in uh and about my work hmm. but i never asked him you know why i never asked him the question really? why yeah oh yeah, man yeah. i would have been all over I mean, that. Why, no no but at some point is yeah. you know why why open that why open that door it doesn't matter anyways because it, it happened matter. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's so. interesting so do you yeah. think today if you're young and you're you're an artist. Do you think it's easier for younger people today because of social media and things like that? Or do you think it's harder? Well, I, I think it's different. Um, Cause I mean, there's, you also have more competition, I guess you could say, well, cause no, there's I, so well, many yeah, people. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and that is there, therein lies, you know, the truth of the matter is that the vast majority of people that graduate from art school wind up doing something else with their lives. They yeah. may have, you know, they may be creative in their lives, but they're not making art. Yeah. You know I mean? Hmm. Um, I mean, it is a, a challenging um, profession, and you start a family, and then all of a sudden you have these financial responsibilities, yeah. and and then you know that blows the whole thing up. You don't have kids, right? No, we don't. You know, neither of us ever were interested in having children. So. Is that one of the reasons why? Is because you could be? More I don't know. No, I don't. We just never either. Neither of us ever saw us as being parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I've been. A, we've been great aunts and uncles. I. Don't, I can't tell you how many of my friends' kids I've put to work at. You know, painting my fence or yeah. doing, working <laughs> in my yard, and I've taught a a number of my friends' kids how to drive stick shifts and oh, and awesome. stuff and. At this point, you know, uh, over the years, uh, because I'm more active than some of my friends, I've, you know, mountain biked and rock climbed with, you know, their kids. Oh, uh, okay. You know, that are now adults, you know. Wow. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, in, in that aspect, um, in many ways, um, art is, you know, there's a, a preponderance of lust for new. Hmm. Right. Yeah, in every like medium, whatever. Yeah, it is. yeah. So in many ways, um, that you know dominates in some ways 
um, that entry level or that that lower level of of what is out there and being seen and then you know then there's a there's a few that break through and then a few that you know break through again yeah and then you know then that's the way it works and the the ones that are don't break through or they you know they do what they do or don't do what they do yeah you do it on the side or it's yeah whatever yeah whatever it is yeah so did you find that hard as far as like do you have a schedule of like how much work you try to keep yourself to to putting out or or is that that Uh, because you gotta it's up to you right I've, i've always been um dealt with you know creativity as uh an integral part of my day okay of life of every of every moment and so um i know painters and other artists that have to go somewhere Mm -hmm. you know and then they work and they come home or they have studio space somewhere else that gets them away from whatever the complexity of their you know their home or their their life is and that's not me Hmm. um i don't know there's a in some get... way in some ways influenced by um uh, a thought uh, there's a group of, that was active called flexus, flexus and, yeah and basically it was a movement that was talking about the art in every day hmm. and they would do things like they would you know make a meal and you know that would be the and then they'd eat a meal in front of a you know as at the gallery that would be the the work of art and actually one of the one of the one of the, you know um uh and there was definitely a social element uh consciousness element to it uh a political element to it i mean one of the one of the you know uh most notable flexus artists was actually yoko ono oh. and one of her most famous pieces was sitting on a stage with um, with a pair of scissors and then the work of art was instructions and the instructions were come up pick up the scissors and cut a piece of my clothing off what the hell and that and that and that was the the piece a a very political Hmm. statement about you know personal space and you know you know uh identity and 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 things like that um but you know the the uh, you know the idea of uh you know Life is art. You know, mm-hmm. every moment of your life should be lived as a work of art, because you know it is, and mm-hmm. and so you know that's kind of something you know I've kind of inter, you know thought about and and attempted to um, use as a guiding mm-hmm. principle in some degree about you know how we live. So I have a painting studio. We have. Uh, a, a space, a workspace inside the house. Um, uh, and then I have my, you know, I have, you know, power tools and stuff that I use yeah. out in the garage. And, yeah. and so our whole house becomes like, you know, you want to make something. Yeah. And, you know, I create things that are out in the yard and hmm. I create objects. I paint, I create op- objects, I make wearables. I, you know, yeah. for, you know, for Donna to, to wear and yeah and so um, that's awesome yeah so everything you know everything is you know grist for the mill so hmm. to speak yeah. but you're not doing like one single particular thing all the time like one particular style because that to me no, i feel like i get burnt out like no mostly. no well i mean i'm i'm primarily i would have to say i'm primarily known as a painter mm-hmm. right and that would be probably you know my primary thing and 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 mostly because you know that's what you know that you know i I tried to talk frank into showing my objects and stuff for years and (laughs) and he was never really all that interested in the objects but you know Hmm. the paintings you know i I was that frank i got work you know can you slot me in for a show he goes yeah how about february okay i'm you know i'd send the work out to uh, uh, a gentleman who used to photograph my work, before, you know, and, okay. and he photograph it, go to the go to the framers, and then go to the gallery, and that's the last time I'd see it, you know. So, okay. um, you know, so I was primarily known as a painter, so I do paint, but even even there, the the two dimensional work is informed by everything else, mm-hmm. and and so I I think very, you know uh 
there's an intellectual um, substance behind the paintings that drives the paintings. Mm. So it's not like, you know, oh, I'm going to paint today and I throw a bunch of paint on the canvas <laughs> and, okay, then tomorrow I get up and, okay, I, you know, I'm... So my, while there's emotion in my work, it's not exclusively emotionally driven. Hmm. Okay, so it's not like, you know, expressionism where it's all emotion, and, you know, and, and, and then it has a certain power and, and movement in the work, which is, um, you know, seductive and power, you know, powerful to, to, to observe. But that's not, you know, uh, there's certainly emotion involved in the work, but that's not what drives it. You know, it's hmm, not okay. happy, sadness, anger, you know, it's not uh, any of you know, rejection. It's not any of the things that one considers an emotion. That's not what drives the work. Okay. So do you have some sort of like an idea then of like... Uh... Well, it's not an idea. You know, it's, it's more than an idea. I mean, I've done, you know, going back to this whole idea of, of um, life... Uh, as a work of art, I've done a, a number of time-based pieces over mm. the years, and that's kind of where, that's kind of what I hang my hat on is, is how time um, uh, sculpts life, mm. right? And and you know one of the metaphors for that has been for many years um, landscape. Yeah. Right. The forces of nature, whether, you know, it's the wind, the rain, you know, uh, tra you know, hurricanes, you know, a bright, sunny day, all these elements, all these forces sculpt mm. what we perceive as landscape. And and those are metaphors for all the forces that interact in all points of our lives. Mm. And so in my work, that's kind of that is what I'm interested in in getting to one you know not only seeing what those forces are and how they function but then what happens over time that changes the landscape if you will of whether it's you know, us as individuals the society of of um uh, of whatever happens to be, you know, uh, in front of me, yeah. and then and then and then and just finding a way to kind of articulate that, you know, in your visual, work. in in the work, yeah. right? So, yeah, yeah. So most recently, um, you know, I've you know over the years I've had um, I paint and and I don't I don't just I really don't destroy much. And so I have a number of, of canvases that have never been finished. Oh wow! Right, and do you have a lot? A pardon? Lot? Do you have a lot of paintings? Um, well, at the moment, I I have a number of paintings. Yeah. You know, um, because since the gallery closed, I've you know I've been showing. I had a show at Eric Fissel Gallery at Phoenix College, and I've had some other exhibitions here locally, and I'm always working on you know, having, you know, showing the work, yeah. but I, you know, I don't show paintings that aren't finished, yeah. right? I'm, I'm very particular that if I show a painting, it has to be exactly what I want it to be, mm. that every mark on it is succinct and, and where I want it to be and, and uh, doing what I wanted to do in, in the context of that piece. Yeah. And so if a, if a painting isn't there, well then, I have it, and I go back to them from time to time, and and so what in kind of looking at this kind of idea of not necessarily what is happening at any given moment, but what happens in between these moments, right? Yeah. Right? So you know, I have paintings that are from like you know two thousand eight, two thousand nine. I have paintings that for twenty thirteen and and stuff, and so I've been you know how do I how do I combine those? Right. Yeah. What, what's a methodology for combining those that that illustrates the things I'm interested in in kind of thinking about? So, mm. one of the things I've been doing on the on the new work is I've been photographing those paintings that are unfinished, and then I print them out on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper, 
And I, my, all my work is very specific sizes, so it makes some of this stuff, you know, in terms of the geometry, pretty, pretty simple. And I'll, and I'll draw line uh, grids on them in two-inch squares, and I'll cut those squares out of a painting that was done like in 2008, and a painting that was unfinished in 2013. And I'll take those two-inch squares of the images and throw them in a bag. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. And so what those <laughs> represent are like, if you put them back together, they are the uh, narrative of that moment. Right? Mm. Because my, my paintings tell stories. They're narrative. They're not non, you know, there's a narrative quality to my work. Yeah. And so each one of those little squares is a moment that when combined as an original tells that story of that moment in mm. time or that story in time yeah. and by mixing them together i'm mixing up those periods and they what's different in them is really what has happened in between them yeah and then i pull them out and arbitrarily just blindly make a grid the size of the canvases and then i photograph those jesus right? <laughs> and then and then i and then i use those as to then take those two canvases <clears throat> and using that information of that combination of just those selected moments, mm. rework the paintings mm. using that information. Right? That's crazy. That's like painting Inception or something yeah, like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And so, um, so you'll after you with the results that you get, you'll actually you'll finish the painting based on those results. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, and um, and it has been because you know another thing that has to do with time, and one of the things you you see, you know, there's a lot of things involved in time. Yeah. And one of those things that I find is kind of my my new that's that that uh, a lot of people pay attention to is memory, mm -hmm. right? Um, and what happens over time. But it's not only memory, but it's your belief system, um, your understanding of, of life, uh, your value system. All these things get adjusted through your experiences, mm. right? Yeah, you know, every experience alters your perception. Yeah. Right? And so, but one of the things that memory does is, is equally altered through these experiences, everything that happens to you. Right? Mm. And so by taking out these little things, it's like re also recombining your memories and they change, they alter, mm -hmm. right? And then when you see these paintings, that, that's a perceptual change wow. that's involved in all these other kind of processes that are affected by the um, forces that are applied over time, hmm. right? Yeah. And so the interesting thing is some of the paintings will, you know, you can, you know, when you look at the original painting and and uh, we'll pick out parts or even when you look at what I call the drawings because I, I call these things drawings and I take yeah. them up above where I paint and use them as reference, but they're, yeah. I'm not... I'm not doing a literal thing. I'm not changing them to look like these drawings. Mm. The drawings are what are informing the the working on this canvas yeah. of taking the synthesizing the combinations that I've that I've discovered through this random process or this mm. that well it's not necessarily random because yeah. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm have it's a very but very particular process to get to that point. They're informing them. So you wind up with something independent that's uh, um, an aggregate of the these moments and the passage of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't have a problem. And then I'm then I'm out in the yard making making objects and with pieces of wood and uh, you know that are much more sculptural. And yeah. I don't know if you were on my website. I was. Yeah. yeah I did saw you did you, did you go to the point yeah. where you where you saw the Images from the exhibition at the official gallery. Um, if you went to, if you saw that, you know, I showed one of my large sculptures um, called "Never Let Me Down." Okay, and it's basically the trunk of this oh. grapefruit tree that was in my backyard, and it died. Oh, 
14, 15 years ago. Hmm. And I saved this thing, and it was part of different sculptures I made in my backyard. And wow. this grapefruit I, I ate, and that came off of this tree, I ate it. I sent it all over the country to friends. Uh, you know, one of the best recipients was my father. You know, before he passed away, uh-huh. he had a half a grapefruit every huh. day for breakfast his entire adult life. And so I when had fruit, I'd send him boxes of grapefruit. So, you know, this, the, this, this tree, this hunk of, of its structure, yeah. you know, um, you know, I, I, it's on these three legs. It's, it's, it's stunningly beautiful. Hmm. It has this really gorgeous, never let me down, you know, this, this idea again about nature, one nature, you know, and our relationship to it and yeah. its transience and yet it's permanence and, you know, what these, um, moments, you know, uh, mean, uh, in terms of the reference to, you know, our personality and our lives. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you still have it? Oh yeah. It's up in the house. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. It's gorgeous. I mean, it was in my yard and so it has, I mean, it was in the sun and dried and and stuff. And then when I decided to, to, to do something with it, to actually exhibit it in, Mm -hmm. in this more formal way then I, Took it out and I sanded it and I oiled it and that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you can't keep your hands off of it. It's so seductive, man. You just want to go up and, and when you touch <sighs> would, it, would it's it on is. these on these like thin legs, oh, metal legs, right. and when you touch it, it kind of it moves a little bit, so it you know it feels alive. Yeah, it's that's totally awesome. True. Yeah, it's a great piece. That's why I always think whenever it, like technology is obviously amazing and you know you can do so many interesting and cool things and spreading information but whenever like i go out on a hike or anything like that and you see how amazing like nature is and how beautiful and like intricate and like complex it's like it's so much more fucking amazing than any like gadget or like anything it's like well it's I'm, I'm not a lead light i mean i you know i have a lot a what? of technology the lead light I'm, what is that i've never heard of, that before um uh, people that uh askew technology oh i've never yeah, heard that term yeah, before yeah. and um uh so i have a lot of technology in my life i yeah. use i photograph i you know uh i use you know photoshop and and you know we we you know uh, we're big. We watch a lot of film and yeah. And uh, so I'm, you know, I do my own website. I do my own blog. Really? Oh, wow. I do. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You need you need control over over. You know, I, I you know I, I want control over the things I make. And my yeah. website is something I make. My blog is something I make. Yeah. You know, and uh, so uh, I want control over those things. Yeah, because nobody's going to be as, you know, careful and considerate about taking well, care of it. Well, you know, it's, you. it's not even that. I, you know, I'm, it's not, you know, careful or considerate. It, it's, um, you know, though I, I, I view those just like my paintings, especially the ones that are not finished or I'm currently working on. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a work in progress, right? Yeah. Life mm-hmm. is a work in progress. Life, you know, so... I want to be able to, you know, I was just in tinkering with my website today. You know, I'm, I'm collecting things for my, for my most, what will be my new blog post. And, you know, that, so all this stuff is living. Yeah. You know, it's not static. It's not sending something somewhere or giving someone else control over how it's, how it's viewed or, mm-hmm. or um, uh, kind of what surrounds it, right? Yeah. yeah, because everything has context. You yeah, know? you know, you take this chair and stick it out in the, in the street, and it's kind of here. It's a really beautiful chair. It yeah. goes in with your sticking and sticking out on a thing, and it's you know, it's a, it's a piece of piece of trash. <laughs> yeah, that's so it's true. everything is context. Yeah, that's very true. So, do, are 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 you interested in how people perceive your artwork or the feelings that people, or do you? you just make it and put it out there and then it, it is what it is well this is this is one of the gifts that uh frank gave me yeah. is that i never had to worry about what people thought of the work hmm. right i just called him up and he said yeah he would, you know let me see what i got I mean, yeah you know I, ba- I basically showed at his at the at perimeter gallery every two years for wow. 30 years and occasionally every three years but usually every two years, 
Yeah. And uh, so um, that was that was the gift. So I never, you know, and I had I had sold out shows. I had some shows that didn't sell so well, but it mm. never stopped. It never said, "Well, Charles, you, you know." Can't have the show drive. before sold out, and this one you only sold, you know, X number of pieces. We can't show your work again. Yeah, that's you know, awesome. It didn't sell enough. Yeah, you know, didn't matter. Yeah, you know, so, so um, that was a gift to me. That you know was irreplaceable. I never had to worry about. Um, I made the work that was interesting to me mm-hmm. to make, and I think that there's, you know. Ultimately, we all have reasonably similar experiences. No, my experience isn't the same as a Sudanese refugee. I understand that. You know, but um, on a very broad level, you know, we're all, you know, face many of the same issues on some, in some context. Mm. You know, like struggles in your life. Struggles, right? love, you know, uh, hate, violence, um, and all that stuff is in my work. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. Um, That's I don't know, yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know. There's a there's a diptych there called "Time Is the Wound," yeah. and I mean, there's there's definitely violence in that in that in that painting. So I think there's enough there for people to connect to. Mm-hmm. Even if it's, you know, I like the colors. Or it goes with the couch. Yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> you know, or, or deeper. And there's people that, you know, they walk into the room and they say, I love what the, that painting looks like. And, and that's the story. And I have other people that want to have, you know, this in-depth conversation about what drives the work and that specific piece and and want to delve into it much further yeah you know and so you know i'm i'm i have a very broad um uh a room for what i believe uh is art and i think that you know people make fun of you know work that ha- that's less sophisticated mm. or poorly made or or anything and and uh, or even machine made it just shoved out there you know that you see and maybe target up on the wall with yeah, the, yeah. with the frames and stuff but but like, the one thing the one thing about that is when people spend money on that it has it only it only, it only has a, an emotional spiritual psychological value hmm. it has no practical application and so that's one of the things that i think gives hope is that people the regardless of their epic epic economic or educational or social economic or, or whatever yeah. that they put something on their walls for purely emotional spiritual aesthetic intellectual reasons hmm. you know yeah that's awesome yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just yeah. just for the sake of like beauty or to well, whatever, whatever, there. whatever. You know, so I'm I'm not even you know I'm not even isolating it to to say, and that's why I said all those things. It could be, you know, it could be faith. It could be beauty. It could be, uh, you know, emotional. I mean, you know, with a gambit of reasons. I'm you yeah. know, so I and maybe even reasons I can't even specify or I don't even know hmm. that are beyond my comprehension for an individual. Yeah, you know. But it has no other function because it, you know. Have you have you done uh, yeah. any traveling like outside of the U.S. at all? Um, I've been to you know not not much. I've been to yeah. Canada and okay. I've been to the just over the border in Mexico and yeah. Stuff and, yeah, it's always interesting. I think like yeah. seeing other cultures and yeah, like yeah. the art that like originates from like other cultures and I've always been like fascinated with. I don't know, just traveling in general. Uh, like... Yeah, I, you know, I, I, um, my wonderlust is it's done. No, it's uh, it's much more closer to home. Hmm. 
you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, the number of times, I mean, I've been in the Grand Canyon and in in the superstitions and the Mazatols mm -hmm. and in Utah and in you know, Zion and, you know, just, you know, just kind of, you know, moving outward from here. It's not that I'm not interested mm -hmm. in that or I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly, um, in terms of the art I see, I see art from all over the world. Yeah. Um, and, well, uh, the U S is so big. I mean, like yeah. you said, there's so many amazing places that you yeah, can yeah. see in this country. Yeah, I haven't yeah. even been to the freaking Grand Canyon. Yeah. I'm from Arizona. I've never yeah, been to the Grand yeah, Canyon. Yeah. yeah. You'll get there. Damn. Someday. That's not good. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Cool. So I know you mentioned you're, uh, you guys are both into movies. You're big into movies. We're big films. Film. Yeah, yeah. What do you What do you like? Is there anything new or? Oh gosh, recent man, you guys are into? You know, Do you um, try to stay in touch with like younger generations? Like, what's what going on with, or do you just like totally ignore, like, popular culture nowadays, like rap and all that sort of stuff? You know, you can't avoid popular culture. Yeah, I mean, it's popular culture for a reason. Yeah, you know, because it's popular. Yeah, and if you're alive, and you know, I'm, I'm. I'm, um, like I said, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I, I read a lot. I, you know, there's websites I visit, there's things I read, there's, um, so yes. You're a I part mean, of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, um, uh, yeah. So what do you think about like today? It's popular. Yeah. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting yeah. in, on, on some levels, mm -hmm. um, but then it's not interesting on other levels. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think one needs to be aware of it mm. in kind of not just say, oh, it's all, you know, that, you know, that, you know um, but, in, and I certainly think that it's worthwhile to uh, give it um, a certain amount of thought Mm. and intellectual exploration mm -hmm. but um you know there are many things that i feel are either redundant or have you know were or saying or speaking to things that are you know uh overly obvious okay uh, or uh, but that's what you know but that's that's what that's what it being young is. It's becoming aware, hmm. right? Becoming aware, like what do you yeah. mean? What do you mean becoming? Aware? Well, just what I said. Becoming yeah. aware of things going on around about you. about life. Yeah. About experience. I know when I see uh, like because I'm still I'm a young person, but like when I see like younger people like just out of high school in their early twenties, and it's like I remember feeling like that that feeling of like just not really know knowing what's going on because you haven't experienced a whole lot it's just interesting to see that even though i'm not that old but i've like you know i'm 20 i just turned 28 so it's like you gain more insight as you uh -huh. get older and uh -huh. it's just interesting like looking back like you can see that in other people well yeah and then, and then you know I, I think this is you know and i quite frankly i think it's a great time to be young hmm. Because there's so many things going on that demand your attention. Mm. That's yeah. good and bad, though. Because there's a well, lot of things. No, it's got to be good. It's got to be good. Really? Because it has to make people more aware. Just yeah. like when, you know, like I said, when I, when I was uh, coming of age, and then when I call that, you know, late teens, you know, it was the war in Vietnam. There was a yeah, political upheaval. There was, you know, and as a young man, that at that time when the draft and stuff, you know, you had to be aware. You know, there was something going on that was going to affect your life that had the potential to drastically alter your life. Was that like a noticeable like weight on you when you were younger? <clears throat> um, yeah, because when you were a certain age, you had to you had to uh, register for the draft, yeah. and there was you, you know, the, and you and you got a number, and if your oh, number wow. was a certain place, then you then you you either volunteered or you you were in the service. Yeah. I mean, or then you had to do, 
Um, and either you were a conscientious objector or you left the country or you went or you, you, know, you had heel spurs or, heel or spurs. you know. Or, Shout out to yeah, Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, not, that's all I want to do is go. That's all the further I want to go with that one. But, um, you know, so, so that was, those were, so yeah, you, you know, every, everybody in, in, in that I knew at that mm. time was. Freaked out. Certainly aware of those things. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's, that's what's happening now. And I think there was, at, for a while, there was a little bit of a lull, hmm. you know. And now that you see, you know, the, what's going on politically and socially and, and, and you know, the rise of, of mass violence, you know, uh, or at least uh, promoted on, on, um, on the young yeah. and, um, uh, and things like that um, uh, is, you know, you have to be, I don't know if you're a young person to me, you have to be conscientiously unaware. Conscientiously unaware. Yeah, you have to make the choice. You want to be? Like, that's a goal you're saying? Yeah. You have to be conscientiously unaware. Yeah. Why is that? Well, not to understand that there, you know, uh, you know that uh, what is going on, not only in the U.S., but around the world. You're saying you don't want to be aware. Well, I mean, of no. I think you'd have to be oh, okay. conscientiously unaware. Oh, okay. Not to understand. Oh, not to that, understand. Okay, you know? get you. And whether it's you know you 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 focus on the things like the you know the popular culture, yeah, yeah. exclusively, and you know the Kardashians or you know the you know Kanye just, West, or or you know even the the latest of your parents being wealthy enough to. Yeah pay for you to get into a college and you don't go to school you just do social media and you become a brand well, ambassador for hair care and yeah. you, know, you could be one yeah seriously yeah you know yeah. so you know yeah well I, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah well i you know um <laughs> it's something you know so the, the history of hair you know okay so when i first met donna mm -hmm. um I had hair down in the middle of my back. Holy shit. Wow. And that was one of the things that um, she claims or said that attracted her to me. It's like Fabio or something like that. And um, <laughs> But over the years, I had it very short. And hmm. for many years, I, you know, I had it you know, very, very short with just a little kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I don't know, a, number, a few years ago, maybe 15, 10, 15 years ago or something, she asked me to grow it back out. Really? Yeah. Oh, so it was like short, short. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just had a little, you know, a little thing yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was okay. You know, why not? Yeah. You know, so it's one thing I could do for her hmm. that had, had just taking no effort on my part. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, it and, takes some effort. And, well, you know, not cutting it, and and yeah. that's sometimes oh, okay. that's a big effort for me. I've. You know, I've whacked at it with scissors and stuff. Which, really? Yeah, yeah. I hate and, getting my uh, haircut. Uh, so, um, and then it gets to a point where um, all my contemporaries don't have any hair. Yeah. They couldn't grow it even yeah. if they wanted they gotta to. got to be jealous, man. So, you? Uh, so I just, you know, Oof. I just... They see you. I just and let it like, go. I just let it go, man. Yeah, you know, that's like the perfect length, though. Yeah. That's like Keanu yeah. Reeves' uh, style. Yeah. That's what I want, but any longer than this... And the wind, it pisses me off. I get yeah. out there and I can't see, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! I, I just end up getting my haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, well, you know, it does. It does take some tolerance. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, on the scale of things to be <laughs> intolerant about, yeah, yeah, there's much bigger things to be intolerant about than your hair. Your hair in your face. Yeah, there's many, many Damn, more. Damn, I don't things. know. That pisses me off. Yeah, yeah. There's other things to be <clears throat> no, more, more, yeah. Yeah. So do you think people are getting more intelligent then? If we oh, have man, more like that, access? That, that is, uh, that's a black hole there, man. Yeah? yeah? I like going into black yeah. holes. Just well, no, I, I just think that the ability to focus on things that, um, Feed your preconceived notions narrows your world. So if you're just so looking... that so whether the less intelligent, I'm not going to go there. Mm -hmm. 
But I think there is a propensity um, uh, for your world to narrow hmm. on a global scale. Well, it used to be your, you know, your world was your neighborhood, yeah, your town, your city. Yeah. Um, it didn't get much bigger than that. Or if it did get bigger than that, then it took so long to, and it took an effort to then to go outside of it. And mm-hmm. then even if you got a newspaper, there were oftentimes, or a magazine, there's not just the things that you wanted to read yeah. or that interested you. There were things there that interested other people because you know you had to have enough stuff in that material to interest enough people to Hmm. make it economically viable yeah yeah and now you don't need that you can just pay attention to what you want what you want and there's an economic viability in Hmm. in the narrowing of that information that's interesting so i don't know you know so i won't go back and so intellectual curiosity uh and and that is certainly in popular culture yeah highlighted so in a broader you know in a broader base no i think people are as interested in what's going on russia wouldn't see so many of the thing political things going on today Mm -hmm. that are in countering you know kind of this um uh uh, uh, how you want to put it? Um, lust for um, nostalgia. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because you, know? you can find that group, and you can. Be yeah, yeah. That, and that so group. there, there are people that are saying, "Hey, you know, that's, you know, um, the world is connected. Mm-hmm. You know, the idea of us being, you know, all the states collapsing." To their own little is never you can't put that genie yeah. back in the bottle. I don't, know how that, I don't know how hard you try, it's not going back yeah, in the bottle. Yeah. So, um, and there's plenty of people out there that are trying you know, f- fighting against this, yeah. you know, this phenomenon, yeah. you know, regardless of how how seductive it, it is, you know. Hmm. And let's face you know, let's face it, you know, there's throughout history, there's always people that have gotten left behind yeah yeah you know it's the nature of it's nature yeah I evolution mean, of it's people evolu- well society i mean all you got to do is look at landscape look at landscape there we go there's the metaphor yeah uh, that's true new trees different trees the fire comes through and burns all new plants yeah you know yeah that's crazy things change nothing stays the same yeah and so attempting to to um, to do that hmm. um, is um, destined to failure regardless hmm. of how long it keeps on going or attempts to be kept on going. Yeah. Sooner or later, it always explodes. That's not good. This has got to be like... Yes, it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's not good. Well, let's put it this way. Let's not put a value judgment. On it. yeah. It's not good or bad. Yeah. Now, whether it's moral or not, that's a whole other issue. Yeah. And whether more, you know, and then morality is, uh, you know, um, you know, is again, you know, based on a whole another set of, of uh, s- uh, structures hmm. that people apply to their decision making. But do you think so? Do you think, um, like, let's just say, like a hundred years from now, like technology is just going to continue to, to, connect people, and people are just going to get more and more connected. Um, I have no idea. Yeah. But, you sure know, it's, it technology isn't going away. Yeah. And where it winds up will, you know, I mean, that's part of the fun. Hmm. Now, what you do with that technology is a whole nother kettle of fish. Yeah. You know, whether you, you know, what do you, what do you use it? Do you use it to subjugate? Hmm. Do you use it to control? Or do you use it to... Um, uh, illuminate hmm. and expand people's opportunity and creativity. That sounds good. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping happens is we have in the future like robots and, and things like that do all the monotonous like boring tasks and then humans well, are freed up to be more Well, creative. see, I mean, in, in many ways 
that's the transition we're making now, and that's where yeah. this nostalgia comes from. Yeah. You know, I mean, even even if, for say, the manufacturing jobs were to come back, mm-hmm. or they are, they're all <laughs> anim- they're all animated. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you got to yeah. you need a guy to push a button. You need a you need a computer yeah. um, education and techn- technological education. Hmm. You know, the only the only people that don't have that, all they're doing is pushing a broom, hmm. yeah. cleaning the toilets. Yeah. You know, so though it's already that what you're saying is, is already, we're already there now. So the challenge is, how do we cope with that? Yeah. yeah. Right. And the way you cope with that is through education. Mm. Right. What type of education though? That's the hard part. Cause it's like, what, what are people going to do? It's like, what do you train people to do if you don't? Well, know what to train I mean, people for. <laughs> you know, well, you're always going to need plumbers. Yeah. Um, you're, always trade gonna need, stuff. you're always going to need technicians that can fix things. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. you're always going to need tradespeople, mm-hmm. but the trades are different. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, because it's like uh, I go to like I just went and got my oil change in my car, and I used to work uh, at a Mercedes dealership, and it's just like the cars just keep getting more and more advanced, yeah. and the technicians are basically becoming like computer programmers yeah. versus like. Yeah. Guys, you know, nuts and bolts yeah. and fucking oil. And, and um, uh, gosh, I was, again, you know, my NPR addiction. Yeah. Um, they were they were looking at this idea of, of transfer of skill sets yeah. from old technology to new technology. Hmm. Right. So like retraining people? Well, to some degree, hmm. but taking some existing skill sets. Mm-hmm. Right, that are applicable, mm-hmm. and they were looking at coal miners mm. in the Appalachian, and many of those jobs require technical ability. They're working with machines. They're not down there with pickaxes anymore. Mm-hmm. They're, it's all you know machines. There may be some hand labor, but it's machines. And then they were looking at wind turbines, mm. right? And wind turbines at the, at this moment in time are hard up for technicians to install and repair them. Hmm. And some of these jobs pay $75,000, $90,000 a year. Okay. Right? But you got to travel. Mm-hmm. Right? And so they were looking at working with some of the folks in these communities that are looking towards the future and saying, hey, we're, we have people that have this skill set. Where can we, what can we get them where they're making the kind of money that allows them to have equity in the economic, social economic life of our country, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they don't want to travel, mm. right? So they that's the to... barrier. They're so connected to their community. Yeah. There are three generations, four generations in that community. Mm-hmm. So part of the training process is not necessarily skill set. Yeah, It is... Changing how we think about what home is, what um, community is, um, hmm. those kind of issues. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think that's interesting because it's like, you know, there's many places in the U.S., you know, big cities like Detroit where there's a large industry there at one point and then that industry leaves and either you leave that community or you try to stay in that community and you, you know, struggle, but it's like, how can you, I mean, if we're going to be like nomadic based on having to move for career opportunities, it's like, how do you, like you said, it's like, how, what is a community? If, if you're not going to like buy a house and know that you're going to live there for like 50 years, you're just constantly on the move. It's like, what is it? That's interesting to me because especially for younger people now, it's like because real estate's so expensive and a lot of people rent. So it's like a lot of people are very transient because it's like they could move to a new city for a new job. They don't know where their career is going to be. So it's like, what, what is, what's the future going to well, be? Well, I mean, like? you've already described it. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, the generation is more apt to move more. Yeah. Right. And but when you look, I mean, I mean, just look back to, you know, when people were living on the East Coast, they moved to Chicago and then they came out West. Yeah. What were they looking for? Gold. 
economic Go, uh, economic maybe. economic opportunity yeah yeah you know but it was like new uncharted territory now it's not like we're like going and conquering new land or anything like that you know well you're well it's a different kind of opportunity oh. you're right i mean you're you're right on that aspect but let's stop thinking let's you know let's stop thinking in negatives well in that kind of I, you know, in that kind of terminology, hmm. because for those people, regardless of where they were going, it was uncharted for them. Yeah, yeah. And when you move to a different city, it's uncharted for you. Hmm. Even though there may be a job or something there, oftentimes those don't work out. Just like you went out and you, you wanted to start a farm or hmm. you wanted to go for gold or you wanted to, you heard about some place that there was gold and you went out to start a store or, yeah. you know, or a bar or, you know, a brothel or whatever it was. I'm going for brothel. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. That's very the original true. internet. Dang, yeah. man. Yeah. Crazy. So, I mean, we're still there, right? Yeah. The number one, the number one thing that people uh, they should search they... for. Oh, yeah. on the internet. Yeah, yeah porn, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's so. true. That's crazy, man. But uh, that's super. But th that what I was saying. Or this has to be like one of the most interesting times to be alive in human history. Like this point when this type of technology comes out, because this is like nothing ever that we know of. Close well, that's only that. because you live now. Yeah, but nothing in human history. Well, that yes, we it know has of. the no. industrial revolution, the printing press. I mean, at one time. Um, yeah, but the connectivity. Is well, I mean, that's uh, yeah. So, but all those things radically change yeah, the world that's true so this is a radical change also yeah and the next radical change will be thinking oh man this is the most radical change whether it's living on mars and yeah. earth is you know whatever you know that we're not living on any planet we're just living in space like our heads in a jar like futurama yeah, well yeah <laughs> that's what i'm hoping for yeah. Well, the transfer of consciousness, you know, from... Do you believe that that's possible? Do you think um, they're really going to do that? And would you be interested? You know, um, I, 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 that's, you know, that uh, mortality or immortality is an interesting, excuse me, idea. Yeah. And um, I am, at this point, comfortable with my mortality. Okay. Yeah. Is that I, and I know that um, this is going to end. Mm. I'm in no hurry. Yeah, yeah. But I know it's it will someday. Yeah. And it could. I mean, I mean, literally. I mean, it could. You know, any you know, moment it could. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah, a car it crash. Happens, or... Yeah, I mean, it happens all the time when people wake up one morning and that's that's the last morning. Yeah. And that goes back to the you know. Uh, you know, you know, Fluxus was never that, that fatalistic, hmm. you know, they were very positive. Okay. You know, but, you know, um, so it wasn't like, you know, you know, today may be the last day of your life, so you better be artistic, you know. Yeah. It's, it's not, and I don't think that way, you know, hmm. I, I, I fully believe that I'm going to wake up many days in the future, but one day it will be my, will my last. And so I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, that's interesting. So do you try to like live in the moment then as much as possible? Or are you trying to like, are you aware of, because there's, I feel like there's a lot of people. Well, that... I mean, you know, they're, they're um, it's kind of a, a combination. Hmm. I try to live in the moment, but then I'm not ignoring um, the potential of a future. Yeah. And, and so um, at some point, um, what that means is aging. Yeah. Right. And so that becomes, you know, what what does that mean? Hmm. Right. What is, what is, you know, the the um, like physically, aging? The physically and hmm. mentally and, and, and stuff like that. Hmm. You know, what, what, so so in that aspect, there's um, preparations that are undertaken to address that. In a, in a way that I feel is meaningful for my perception of what I'd like to have happen at that point. In yeah. Time, if I get to that point in time. Have you, um, have you heard about, like there's been some recent stuff that I've heard about, uh, cause like psychedelics are coming more into the uh -huh. conversation and there's like some research that's going on now yeah. about possibly trying to bring it, 
um, and to help like depression or uh, potentially like people at the end of their life uh, to take to, to help like ease the transition uh, into uh, whatever else happens after this. Mm -hmm. Are you inter Would you ever be interested in anything like that? Well, I you know um, Have you tried they were using else? LSD for you know lysergic acid and, and stuff. Uh, for emotional things before it became a pariah. It was mm. only when, you know, you know, Timothy Leary started yeah. turning on and tuning in and dropping out. And yeah, I mean, I mean, they were Did you using do drugs and war and and you know, speed and stuff to make their their soldiers more aggressive. And really? All kinds. Of, yeah, yeah. The history of cocaine. I mean, we're all talking coking up all their troops. And, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I I'm not going to get into my personal. Yeah, okay. Is that is that something you find interesting though? That that research. Um, I, like... don't, I don't know if it, you know it. It is, mm -hmm. and you know at this at this point in you know I don't do any drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean I, because marijuana. I don't, I, I don't have any any you know health issues. I need to do drugs for. Yeah. Um, at this point in my life, you know I I I don't drink by choice, mm -hmm. and um, so. Uh, I have, you know, I have, I have drank, you know, I, you yeah. know, it's not something that I, you know, it's not a religious or, or anything like yeah, that. I don't drink this. You know, it's uh, a personal choice. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I've, I've got two fake hips and, oh, and stuff. And so uh, when I started, when, when some of this stuff started happening, you know, when I needed a hip replacement, then, mm. it, uh, you know, you start looking at. You know, all right. What does it mean to be healthy? Yeah, yeah. All right. Definitely. And how can I, you know, uh, make these uh, things that these things that are now in my body um, work as well as they can for as long as they can? Yeah, yeah. And being healthy <laughs> is is one of those one of those things. And hmm. and um, so before my surgery, I just I pretty much stopped. And then after it, I you know was I doing my rehab, and then it just became a thing that you know. You know, I just, I never, I never, you know, I didn't miss it. Yeah. You know, it wasn't something like, you know, in the social environment, you know. Uh, you can go without it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it didn't, it didn't, it was, it became a non-issue. It became, mm. you know, basically irrelevant. Yeah. So. That's cool. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So I know uh, at during uh, one of the dis discussion groups that we're involved in, uh, one of the topics you brought up was uh, the... Uh, uh, I can't remember exactly how you phrase it, but it, it, the ethical nature of eating meat. And I remember we talked a little bit about uh, mm -hmm. like your, do you, I remember you said you try to be more like selective as far as like your diet. Is yeah. that because of health reasons or is that yeah, because exa of like... Exactly. And you know, when you, when you start looking at your food and what's in it, then, yeah. then you make the decisions to eat what, um, you feel is going to be the best for your body. Yeah. You know, because uh, again, um, I'm in no hurry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And I, because of, of the kind of life I want to lead, my mm -hmm. activity uh, in the outdoors and uh, mountain biking and hiking and backpacking and just mm -hmm. getting up and going for walks with my dog and, and working in the garden and, yeah. and those things I want to be able to do those things, and to be to do those things, you have to be in you know a least reasonable health. Yeah. And so, what can I do to maintain a reasonable level of health? Hmm. Right. Yeah, definitely. And so that that determines what I eat. I mean, have you I, always I been like chocolate? You? I like chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Have yeah. you always been like? Have you been aware of your diet and how that affects your health um, and body? Or is that more recent? I, I have been aware of it, but I'm you know, I've ignored it from yeah. time to time. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, when you, you know, were I'm, younger, I, I mean, I'm a you know, steak and potatoes man. Are you, you really? Know, I was. Yeah. Dang. I mean, I still, I still, if you know, Don says, "What do you want for dinner tonight?" And then she's out shopping. I'm like, babe, steak. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but you know, it'll be. You know, you know, a smaller piece. You know, grass-fed, no hormones. Yeah. Um. You know. Uh. You know. Uh. 
rather than than something you know deep fried or mashed regular potatoes, it would be a sweet potato. Oh, okay. You yeah. know, and, and certainly yeah. on a, a nice salad to go with it. Okay. And, and stuff, and then so and then, then it's the ice cream afterwards. Oh, that's dang. Like, yeah, yeah, that's it. So that's, yeah, I, I mean, there we still occasionally I'll have ice cream for dinner. Really? But, yeah. Damn. Yeah. So it's not. I mean, here again, it's. You know, um, I'm not out to torture myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. But, you know, but again, um, you know, just pay attention. Hmm. You know, pay, pay, be aware. Don't be a glutton. Well, you know, it has nothing to be about being a glutton. It's being hmm. aware. You know, gluttony is um, a, you know, one of the seven deadly sins. Uh-huh. And so it's, when you think about gluttony, what you're thinking about is an emotional um, or a psychological kind of affectation hmm. that you're receiving something from that activity that you're not getting. I, mean, I, I think that happens <laughs> a lot though. with our culture now. You yeah. see, I mean, well, people are so many emotional. Like, yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's why a lot of people are so big is because they do like they fill that gap with like. Food you know, I, you know, shit. I'm not even going to go, go yeah. there. You know, I'm, I'm not a body shamer. Yeah. yeah. You know, no, I mean, you know what you eat and stuff, that's your decision. And, yeah. and, you know, I, I understand that, um, genetics and, you know, all this stuff, um, play into play it. a huge role yeah. in your body type. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, the idea of, of trying to be, something that that you're not in a body type hmm. um and what that does to one psyche mm-hmm. is that that's more obscene than than uh you know torturing yourself like that that's an obscenity yeah so the idea to me is it's not your body type it's not you know it's none of that it's being aware and if you care about your health Mm. then then that is one way that you can help you be the, as healthy as you can be whatever that is is yeah. it's it's fuel right you can it's enjoyable fuel you know but you know um and our culture has done a very good job of making sugar and fat yeah. um psychologically tastes good hmm. but you know for many cultures sugar and fat doesn't taste good really yeah i love sugar <laughs> yeah i mean so i thought so, that was I mean, like some, a of, some of this stuff thing. is is uh, you know is 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 much learned and culturally supported is hmm. is, is not but hmm. at this point in time it's pretty easy to be again. I, you know, I keep on going back to this word, being aware. Hmm. You know, being aware. Yeah, I mean, um, do you think most people are aware? Um, here, you know, here again, you're, you know, I, I'm not. I, I try to avoid like these big, throwing everybody in a big bag yeah you know yeah. all these you know, everybody go everybody just, boom, boom, boom tying it up and then you push it over in the corner and then you know then that becomes a belief system yeah you know, nobody's aware yeah so you know every time your conversation comes up it is nope nobody's aware yeah. you know so I, I try to avoid that you know like and, putting and personal call i try to be as aware as i can be hmm. and when i talk to people and people, you know, you know, ask me about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I talk about it, but mm. you know, um, I mean, you do what you do, man. You know? Yeah. And but you know, I was, Still. you know, um, and you know, what is awareness to you? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, I can hmm. say, you know, yeah. Well, if you you're eating that, you know, look on the ingredient list. And if there's something in there you don't know what it is, and you and you care about, you're interested in what you're putting in your body. I won't even mm-hmm. say care. Yeah, yeah. They're interested in what you're putting in your body. Then you ought to find out what it is. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, for sure. And if you read that and you say, well, you know, they're putting that in floor cleaner. Hmm. You know, do I really want to put that in my body? Fuck. You know. Probably not. You know. Yeah. So um, or. Oh, what the fuck? You know, I, 
<laughs> you know, or yeah, every now and again, you know, yeah, yeah once yeah. a month I'll put that in my body, you know, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, and then, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so that's what, that, that, that's, you know, you know, what I, what I mean. Do you have a particular, uh, like life philosophy? Like I know you said you grew up religious, but I don't know if you're religious any longer no, or I, still uh, maintain I, I that. I grew up, uh, in, uh, as a, uh, a cat in a Catholic family. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, and um, I would I would consider myself spiritual, but not religious. Hmm. I, you know, I'm my opinion of organized religion is, is I think I find it yeah, it's not positive. Yeah, you hmm. know, which is which is shown virtually every moment of every day for the yeah. atrocities and and things that are inflicted on other human beings in the name of religion. Do you think religion is like a stepping stone in human history? Because I feel like a lot of people that I know and that especially me, like growing up, like my family, we were not particularly, you know, like religious. But, you know, I, I myself, like I try to like live, you know, like the golden rule, rule, like do on others as you would, you know, want to be done to yourself. So it's like, do you think people need religion or anything? Um, they need, or I think, I mean, I think what, what is, what religion provides is an explanation of the incomprehensible, hmm. right? People don't want something that's incomprehensible. That's such a big part of existence, which is hmm. death, which is death. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, uh, so they, so they're looking for an explanation or something that they can, that they can say, oh, this is what it is, and then they can get on with the thing. Not if I do these it. things, then whatever it is, I'm prepared for it because if I don't know, you know, because they don't know what what it is, so how yeah. can you be prepared for it? And that Definitely. freaks people out. Oh, for sure, right? hell you yeah. Know? And and so, um, yeah. So that you know, it's it's a security blanket. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, there's very good people, and there's well, I see. I don't want to use you know good and bad. Um, misguided. Pardon. Misguided. Well, uh, yeah. Well, they uh, that use it for uh, in ways that. Um, I think are are self serving, and when you when you actually start reading like the Gospel or the Quran or mm. many of these um, texts, it's all about service. Yeah, you know, service to others. Yeah, you know, it's not about self serving, right? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and um, uh, and so I I, I think that uh, it gets deformed. Hmm. But, you know, we're, you know, um, our intellect, um, we're, we're imperfect, selfish uh, creatures, and, but we're not the only imperfect, selfish. Yeah, I mean, um, every creature on earth is imperfect yeah. and selfish. I mean, what, it, what it, you know, eat, not be eaten, and procreate. You know? Yeah. And, you know, the more that the higher up in the hierarchy, the, the better you eat and the more likelihood that your your genetic component is going to be hmm. uh, in the uh, in the mix. Do you think there's anything beyond that, though, like personally? Um, well, we have we have um, uh, the ability to um, to make it more. Yeah. Right. Um, but we're not the only ones, hmm. you know, I mean, you know, look at the work that's been done with chimps and gorillas and, and things that have been done with porpoise and other, uh, set and life forms that hmm. are doing things that are, um, make their world better yeah. or function better or using tools or communicating with each other mm -hmm. or, yeah, you know, the social structures. I mean, you have Havelina. I mean, they have yeah. a huge social structure. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. They're very family oriented. Huh? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, so 
unique to our to our species but unique in the world no hmm. and that and, and then and then you know we're you know then then it's our manifest destiny that they, we think we're the top of the food chain and yeah. everything should you know is under our control which is hmm. consistently shown to be not true but we ignore that at, on a constant basis yeah that's yeah. not good yeah dang yeah, i'm gonna build my house in a floodplain yeah yeah, right. Well, that's what yeah, the, I'm gonna build my house. All the, I mean, like yeah. people who live in like New Orleans yeah. and places, you know, places like that. Yeah. It's like that, or even places where there's like hurricanes. It's like, man, these people just they don't. They're gonna they're gonna stay there no matter what. Like that's their that's their home. Well, and like, you know, that goes right back to what I was talking about yeah, earlier about yeah. you know the sense of place. Yeah, you know, and 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 we're not you know there again we're not the only species. I mean, even here locally, rattlesnakes are 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 territorial i mean you take them out of their immediate territory and oftentimes they can't survive Hmm. so i mean even reptiles which you know have very limited cognitive ability have a sense of place yeah you know it's pretty tripped out huh yeah that is it's crazy i didn't know that yeah man is there anything else you want to bring up before we wrap this up? Anything no, else that's I, going you know, on? No, I, 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 no? <laughs> nothing crazy. Was, you know, it's an interview, so I was just following. You know, yeah. You have anything else you want to ask? I mean, I'd like to ask you some other things, but I know that uh, you don't want to particularly, particularly, particularly go down that route. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, like I said, the the the, the those avenues, which you know, that, you know, we're talking about the you know what's going on in politics today. Yeah is um uh do you think it's unique or it's just business as usual well if you again if you follow, you know follow history i i forget what presidential presidential election it was hmm. but one of the oh god i shouldn't i should remember this but um they were equally as nasty and one of the protagonists called the other one a hermaphrodite and what oh yeah oh, oh, i mean this the stuff that yeah Damn. I mean, they, they calling names and, and slandering and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Whenever so, I see videos... It's power. You know, it's yeah. it's power. You know, when, when it comes to power, you know, all gloves are off. There's no such thing as, as um, being nice. Hmm. Being, being, yeah. Yeah, whenever I see videos of, uh, like, Nixon yeah. in that yeah. time, oh, my God, that guy was like, holy hell, he was on another level. Yeah, and it's always been that way. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Politics is a dirty game. Yeah. Always has been. I mean, what? You know, who got, you know, um, um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Didn't you watch Game of Thrones? No, just. <laughs> what? Game of Thrones? Everybody loves Game of Thrones. I have not no, seen no, Game no, of Thrones. No, no, no. no. Hmm. Well, even Caesar got stabbed in the back, you know I mean? I oh, mean, okay. I mean, so, I mean, it's like yeah. going all the way back, you know, the first came in, probably whacked some his guy on the head because, you know, he wanted, you know, he wanted to be the top guy. Yeah, and it's just never ending. Never ending. Damn. And, and same as it ever was. Dang, yeah. crazy. Okay, was. so one more thing. Uh, last question I want to ask you. So is there anything, uh, I always, I ask a lot of people this just because I find it interesting. Is there anything like technology-wise that you see coming or that you would be interested in uh, in the future? Like, like VR or electric cars or like anything like drones. Like, is there anything technology wise that you see? No, no. I mean, um, um, the idea of like this connected house is yeah. less interesting to me simply because I, I understand, I mean, I'm on Instagram. I, I, you know, I'm on LinkedIn. I blog, I have mm-hmm. a website, you know, I, um, I you participate, do- you know, in, in you know popular culture to a certain extent so the idea that i am um uh my my security or whatever is is like you know i'm I'm afraid of that but i i don't i don't need alexa in my house yeah i don't need to talk you know and and i don't use siri on my phone you know really I mean, yeah uh, i i don't want to i don't like my well but i did use it to, to get directions over here so really? there's certain applications uh, yeah they yeah. know you're over here right now yeah yeah now, now they know they're they i'm over know. here yeah but uh but i do take steps to to um obscure uh some of my you know as much of my online presence is that you know i feel I want to deal with, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm not, in, not interested in all that kind of stuff. 
Um, uh, you know, gosh, technology. Yeah. Um, do you ever think of like when you're putting things out into the internet world, how long that's going to be there? And if that's like permanent, yeah, that doesn't frighten me because I don't put anything out there. I don't understand that, yeah. you know, because again, I think, you know, one of the things that, that has happened with, a, you know, the g generation that's coming up that has lived with this technology all their lives. Yeah, yeah. It's just part of it. Yeah. And that social element and putting themselves out and being on it is part of They don't think about what mm -hmm. happens in 20 years. Yeah. But um, where I'm at, you know, I didn't have a cell phone in... in and I had a computer, but I didn't have a cell phone and, until I was, oh man, almost, you know, my late 30s, early 40s. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so and so, so my idea of security and, and stuff is drastically different. I mean, mm -hmm. I grew up in a, in a period of time where, you know, open the back door, you just went. Yeah. And all I had to do is be within ear distance of, you know, my mother ringing the bell or one of my buddies saying, hey, Curry, your mom is ringing the bell. Curry? Yeah, that's my last name, Curry. Oh. You know, so everybody, you know, back then, everybody called you by your last oh name. Oh, my God. Yeah. I thought, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, your mom's ringing the bell. And the bell was like the ultimate arbitrator of of your life, you know, when you were out, yeah. when you were out running around. Yeah, yeah. You know, at that age. and. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, we go when they play, pop. and then as soon as the street light comes on, yeah. that's how you know it was too dark. Yeah. Out and you have to come home. Yeah. So that's me. In yeah. The 30s. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's awesome. My experience of childhood. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Um. So that's as close as you were. Hmm. And there was no questioning about what you did. Yeah. Unless you came home bloody, and then it's like, yeah. you know, <laughs> what'd you do? You know, then you had to, yeah. you know, there was some rudimentary explanation. Oh, I fell down or we yeah. were playing dirt clod war or something. Yeah. Dirt clod war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody had a rock in there. Yeah, they, which was always on purpose. Wow, it was yeah. messed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang, crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that, so the idea of that is, and, and so I'm, you know, um, I'm particular, about what I what I put out. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's I don't interesting. Do, I don't do a lot of... I don't do selfies. If you, yeah. if you look at my blog, I, you know, the only time you've ever seen a picture on my blog is at one of my openings. Yeah. Yeah, you know? I noticed that. Even on your Instagram. Yeah, well, my Instagram is all of my art. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's 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 what it's there for. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. You know, it's not... You know, it's not what I had for to show your face every day and it's what not, you're eating. Yeah, it's, it's you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So yeah, yeah. I but, can. But uh, you know, but there again, you know, the there's you know there are certain things that people that should know better are putting out there that I just yeah think that you know what planet did you know did, uh, I mean uh, here again, how could you be that unaware? That's why I think it's interesting though about young people. It's mm -hmm. like at all, especially young people now. It's like I didn't have a cell phone until I was like uh, probably in high school. But now it's like you see like ten year olds with like their own cell phones, and the the stuff that they have access to at that. I mean, it's it, everything basically. So it's like it's interesting to see what's going to happen to those types of people as they get older. Well, I mean, this is this is. I mean, you know, just to kind of maybe touch on politics briefly in yeah. in this particular aspect. You know, now that they're going back to uh, people's college and high school days and looking at their tweets and their texts oh and, and, and stuff. Yearbooks. And yearbooks and, and stuff. There, there is, you know, um, again, this kind of lack of willingness to give or understanding context. Yeah. You know? I mean, the idea that as you go through time... Your perspective does what? It changes. Yeah. You grow. Hopefully. Well, I mean, one way or the other, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, grow. Yeah, yeah. You know, in, 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 in some perspectives, you may think it's in a positive way. In other perspectives, you may think it's a negative way. But it grows. Mm -hmm. So being held accountable for everything that you've said and done 
since you've been a, a zygote. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, is non-functional. Yeah. You know, so what the what the what the idea is is again putting context and seeing how people have grown. Hmm. Yeah. You know, and then and then what's the proof in that? Right? And where do you get proof from? From behavior. Yeah. Right? Yeah, definitely. But now it's you know, it's like you know, on record, basically, you know, well, that's, especially that, if you're putting out like content. Yeah, or, yeah. Well, I mean, even, even, you know, um, you know, what the, can I say one thing? Yeah. Do you think people should be, uh, cause like you see a lot now, like people are trying to like censor other people or like shut other people down. Do you think people should like be more careful of what they say? Or do you think people should just be themselves and not worry about what the backlash is? Um, I think people need to speak the truth. Yeah. Whatever that, whatever that means. Mm. And then taking sections of what people say without context yeah. and, and then using that to say something that was not meant by the original speaker is mm -hmm. obscene. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, so, you know, people say enough stuff that if you actually put what they say in context, you know, then you're going to really understand what their position is. Yeah. And then you can understand whether you want to be with them and agree with them or disagree with them or have mm -hmm. a have a discussion about that with them or not yeah right yeah but again this is this is the the thing about the 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 limiting nature of much of popular culture of of making a concentrated effort to to slim it down to just certain kind of narrower kind of context of ideas yeah. rather than saying here's the kind here's an idea but you know you know here's all the ideas and yeah we're gonna be you know you you know yeah yeah i yeah i totally agree so. that's one interesting thing or one good thing that i like about especially like youtube is if i could see a video of somebody like that speaking or whatever the incident was that happened versus like somebody's opinion on it like I'll, I'd much rather go straight to the source and like mm -hmm. make my own judgment on what somebody said versus like what somebody thinks that that person said or their right, right, perspective right. or whatever it is. Right. And then you can understand. I mean, you know, you know, if if as a as a as a liberal, yeah. um, uh, well. Uh, what? <laughs> you know, this is a safe I mean, space. Well, you, well, you, well, you, you, you know, it's incumbent to, to watch, you know, listen to what's going on in the conservative media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. You know, but it's also interesting to see what's happening in various segments of conservative media because it's mm -hmm. all not Rush Limbaugh. It's all not Fox News. There's other, other voices out there that, that say things and have opinions and talk about beliefs that um actually um mirror some of mine mm -hmm. i agree you know? 100%. and then there's some very uh what might be considered liberal mm -hmm. that you know i'm i'm not agreeing with but then some that are considered off the wall that i do yeah. and you know <laughs> so it's the whole perspective of yeah. again the whole perspective and if you just focus on this one or this one or or this one yeah. or this one, you know, you, you can't make informed uh, decisions. Hmm. Is it time consuming? Well, yeah. 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 And this is this is the argument against the elect you know, for the electoral college. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, um I do think the popular culture ought to be the uh, we ought to elect popular vote or yeah, popular vote, but it, it'll be to me it would be so interesting to see like i understand the risks because of um hacking or whatever it is like that but it's like if they could create a platform like a government platform that allowed people to easily vote 
you know, online, that would be huge. And then also yeah. if you could democratically, because I think a big problem is not like having any say in where tax money is going and being accountable. Like, can you imagine if people could like that's vote? Not, that's, that's not functional. Oh man, that'd be. I mean, amazing. that's what you're doing when, in theory, when you're electing your representatives. Yeah, but they don't. They don't. Yeah, like, well, well, I mean, that's you know, in, like I said, in theory. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say in, in, <laughs> in theory. That's true. And and I understand the the, the thing that you know the the uh, you know ever since the industrial revolution, um, population has been uh, focused in um, urban centers. Mm. Right? Yeah, definitely. And so when you look at some of the uh, demographics and what they were you know, looking at, what they're doing at the Electoral College is giving the rural communities, in theory, an equal voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so the thought to me is really how do you, um, uh, you know, and, and, and the struggles that go in urban in centers and in 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 Appalachia, uh, you know, in non-urban centers, mm. um, uh, uh, places to make a good so everybody has the opportunity to live and produce and contribute. You know, um, how do you manage that, and mm-hmm. what does that mean for representatives? Mm. All right, that's really the question. Right. Yeah. It's not really the electoral college or not, because even if it's not the electoral college, the, the population is still focused in, in urban areas. So urban areas are going to get more representation than than the non-urban areas. Mm-hmm. All right. But, you know, what happens in the non-urban areas? Yeah. They're making food. Right. Yeah. There's other things happening out there. Right. So what does that mean? You know? Yeah, it's well, how how do you compensate people fairly? Well, it's, I, you know, I, I you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't even I don't even know if the idea of this compensation because that that when you say you're you're compensating someone, you're giving them something because they don't have something else. Giving them something because they don't have. Well, they sure. might be contributing, but it might you're, not you're be compensating as much. So as so the idea to me is. Rather than compensating, how do you manage things that they're contributing at an appropriate level? Right? Hmm. Yeah. So, but the prob- so, so it's not compensating them yeah. for they're 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 producing, they're contributing yeah. at a level that is commensurate with the importance of what they're doing. Yeah. And everybody's gotta eat. Everybody, yeah, you know, sure. uh, but that's the problem now, and that's why I'm really interested in that Andrew Yang, the guy who's running uh, for president, and his main platform that he's running on is universal basic income. But you know what he's saying? He's been involved. He's like a tech entrepreneur, and he's been in that Silicon Valley scene for his career. And you know, he's in. He's been involved in a lot of uh, entrepreneurial type. Uh, startup and helping startups and stuff like that and what he says and he sees coming is like all if your population is you know growing and you have more and more people going in the workforce and we're getting more efficient and more and more things are being automated it's like if people aren't fitting in into the economy then that's the problem because it's like if people aren't even fitting in then well, it's that's like what I'm, yeah, that's exactly what i'm talking about yeah. you know how do you how do you get people to fit in it's yeah. a, you know education yeah right you educate and, and stuff, and this is not something that you know you snap your fingers and yeah. it's going to happen. This is a generational issue. Yeah, yeah. You know, and even if even if our even if our you know even if you know everything that we do is automated. Yeah. You know the food we eat, the you know everything. I mean, all the way down the line. Yeah. Um. Then. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you know what? What are you gonna do? Well, well, either, either everyone, is, you know, is kind of has come up to some point, mm-hmm. right? Whatever that point is, yeah. and um, and I'm not, you know, um, at some point there's just too damn many people. Yeah, you know, too. Also, unless yeah. there's a mechanism for bringing. All those everybody up to a base level yeah. of standard of living, yeah, yeah, well, that's, well, that's the, the goal, hopefully. Or you're right, you know, or 
Yeah. Let him eat cake. Huh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Dang, Charles. Well, thank you, man, for coming on and talking. Well, with yeah, me. I mean, some of this stuff you can like. You know, no, no, this is all man. The top. No, no, no. <laughs> it's all super interesting. Yeah, I love yeah, yeah. you're a very interesting person. I'm yeah, well. happy that you were open to doing this and coming on. And well, I've got ideas, all right. Yeah, yeah maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe, ideas, maybe you can come back on and talk some politics at some point. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm. You know, I don't know how you know. My politics are relevant to me, but I don't know how relevant they are to you know anyway. Any I just like talking thing. about it because I think it's good, even if somebody has opposing mm-hmm. views. Like it's just, I think it's good to for people to see that you can have like a civil conversation and not like fly off the fucking yeah, handle yeah, yeah. just because somebody like I don't agree with you on yeah. everything and you don't agree with on me. I'm sure so. Yeah. It's like that's okay. Who well, cares? that's that's one of the things about the outdoors. I mean, I recreate with people that have very different uh, political opinions than I do. Yeah, you know. Uh, I mountain bike with them. I hike with them. Uh, uh, you know, and and you know, one of the things that that does is it kind of highlights that you know we all got kind of very similar problems. Yeah, definitely. Pretty similar issues. Yeah. You know, there were we're we're like more than we're different. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you know. Um, so the whole us versus them. Yeah, I hate that. Uh, scenario is uh, a fabrication. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, it's it's a uh, yeah, it's a fabrication hmm. meant to foster you know these divisions. Yeah, I agree, hundred yeah, percent. So damn, let's end it there. It's a fabrication, baby. <laughs> All right, Charles, thank no you very much. I appreciate it, my, man. My pleasure. That was Thanks badass. for having me. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. Adios.